Hello, my name is Jari Hanhela and today I want to introduce you my Clojure library StyleFi or Stylefy in Finnish. StyleFi is a library for styling user interface components. It was created in 2017 and it has been updated many times since then. With StyleFi, CSS for HTML elements can be defined as Clojure data. This means that your style code is written as closure maps, and these maps are attached to HTML elements with a simple function call. The library converts the closure map to CSS on the fly and scopes it locally. This has many benefits. For example, most of the time there is no need to write CSS selectors. You simply write a style map and then you use it wherever you want with one function call. And since style maps are just pure closure data, we can parameterize them, merge them from other style maps, etc. This also means that virtually there is no dead CSS code. Your IDE probably tells you if you have unused style maps somewhere. Now, you might want to ask that why not simply use inline styles. Well, using StyleFi looks a lot like using inline styles. However, the main benefit of using StyleFi instead of inline styles is that StyleFi gives you CSS features that are normally not available when you are using inline styles. For example, media queries and pseudo classes cannot be used as inline styles, but with StyleFi these features are also available. So the ultimate goal of this library is to make writing CSS code easier and more maintainable. Let's see how it works. So here is a simple web application that I'm going to use to show you how the library works. So this is just a simple web page with some text elements. And here is the code which basically generates this web page. And what I'm going to do is that I want to stylize this top level div element. To do that, first I'm going to create a closure map for it. And actually I have the coach map already here, so let's copy and paste it like this. So the keys in this closure map are basically CSS properties and the values in this map are basically CSS values. Now we could use garden units here, but for demonstration purposes I'm just using simple string values. To use this style in this div element, I'm going to call use style and pass it the wrapper. Let's save it. The page is reloaded, and as you can see, the style has been applied. And what happens here is that StyleFi takes this wrapper, closure map, it converts it to CSS and adds it into the DOM. So let's take a look. We go to the head. And here is the style tag, which contains the styles that StyleFi generates. So basically this style map here has been converted into CSS class and the code is here. So this is the simple way how you can use styles with StyleFi. Okay, let's say I want to increase the text size on this page. One way to do this is that I would take this one single paragraph and call use style and increase the text size, for example, like this. And as we can see, this increases only one single paragraph here. And well, I could use this use style for every single paragraph here, but I had to do it manually. A better way to do this is that I could call stylefy slash tag, which basically creates a CSS tag selector. So let's do this. Let's call stylefy slash tag, and I want to generate style for every single paragraph, and the style is going to be this style map which increases all the which doubles the text size. So let's save it and here it is. So this is the simple way to generate style for 
a specific tag. And what it does, once again, it converts it to CSS and adds it into the DOM. There is some other code here too, but here is the code we just generated. Let increase the font size of every single paragraph. Okay, the next thing I want to do is that I want to stylize the articles on this page. And as you can see, there are currently two articles on this page. And let's say that every single article has some common CSS style that is applied to every single article. But still, I want that this article looks a bit different than this article. One way to do this is to create a function which creates a base style for this article, but it also applies some third party style. So to do this, let's create a function, for example, article style. It takes style as a parameter, and then it has some common style for every single article. So let's say that every single article has margin top, and it also has some padding, something like this. So this is the base style for every single article, and we merge it with the style parameter. To use this style for these articles, I'm going to call use style, and then I'm going to call article style, and for the parameter I'm going to pass nil at this point, we are going to change this soon. Like this. And we can slightly see it, but there is some merging on every single article and some padding was also applied, so I think this works. For now, let's say that this article should have a little bit different background color than this article. So we take the base style and we merge it with some style map which changes the background color. Or so for example, let's create article background color, which is a map which changes the background color. Something like this. And let's pass this style as an argument to this function. Now we can see that the background color of this article was changed and this, ar this, back this article's background color has remained the same. So this way, by merging styles and by creating functions with create styles and apply some third party parameters, we can create styles that are applied to all elements and we can also modify them while needed. So what we have done up to this point is that we changed the background color of the first article while keeping the background color of the second article unset. And basically we could continue like this. So let's say there is a third article and it once again has a different background color than the previous article. So what we are basically saying is that we want that every second article has a different background color. So we could use this method that we define a different style for every second article. But I think this is easier to achieve with CSS pseudo classes. So let's do this. Let's take this off and this off. And let's do the same thing with CSS pseudo classes. So what I want to say that every article has some specific CSS pseudo class. And to use pseudo classes, we can use stylefy slash mode. This is basically the same thing as CSS pseudo classes. It just has a different name. So let's say that every second article has a different background color. 
like this. And now let's save it. And basically we have achieved the same thing with CSS pseudo classes. Now we are just automatically changing the background color. So let's say that let's create the third article like this. And now we are changing the background color automatically by using CSS pseudo classes. Media queries can be generated pretty easily with Stylefy. Let's say that I want both of these sections to be side by side on desktop and on mobile devices they should be just like this. Here is the first section on code and here is the second section on code. And here is a div element which wraps both of these sections. So let's define a style for this div element to make these sections side by side. Like this. And now let's define the width for both of these sections. So they should be equal. Oops, like this. And now I want that both of these sections should not be side by side on mobile. And for that, I want to use a media query. To generate a media query, well, it's very easy with Stylefy. We call Stylefy slash media. And then we define the media query itself. So let's say the max width should be, you can put any value in here. In this case, I'm just putting 64 rem. So the, when the max width is this, we are using a different style map. So let's just say that the display was lock as it was before I changed it here. Let's save it. And now let's take a look. So when we go to the mobile size, the layout changes. And once again, when we go back to the desktop view, these sections go side by side. Now, up to this point, I have showed you pretty simple examples on how to stylize things on this web page. But what if you have to achieve something more complicated, something that really requires you to write CSS selectors? For example, let's say that I want to write a simple debugging helper for, my, for myself. Let's say that I want to include a red box around every single element on this web page when I hover my mouse over this box. Well, that sounds a bit complicated. You cannot achieve this directly via Stylefy. But luckily, Stylefy supports something like manual mode. And what this manual mode means is that you use Garden syntax to write manual CSS selector and then apply some style for every single element that is being selected. So let's say that when I hover my mouse over this element, then we select everything inside of it and include a red box. Like this. And now when I hover my mouse over this box, it draws a red border around every single element. How do we create a style which depends on some state? To demonstrate this, I created this simple button, which I can click and it switches this state off and on. And here is the code for the button. Is it, it's simple widget component, which has some state. And there is the button element, which has a simple button style. And when I click this button, it swaps this state here. 
And what I want to do is that when this date is on, I want this text to be green and this off text to be red. So the style depends on the state of this component. Well, that's pretty easy to do. Let's create a simple function. For example, button state style. It takes the state as a parameter. If state is true, then we return color green and otherwise we return color red. Or we can simplify this a little bit. Let's say that we always return a style map and the color itself depends on the state. So if state is true, then we return green and otherwise we return red. A little bit simpler. And to use this style, well, this is the paragraph element which contains this text. So we simply put use style and we call button state style and we pass the state. Let's save it. Okay, the button is off and the red color is red and when I click it, on its green, off is red. So basically this button state style is just a pure function. It takes the state as a parameter and returns the color. This includes the core features that StyleFi has to offer. All the features and setup introduction can be found on StyleFi's GitHub page. StyleFi has been used in many closure projects in Solita and the API has remained very stable since the project was released in 2017. Thanks for listening and goodbye.